guys, so today I'm going to make this video for uh, the newer players out there and a lot of you guys have questions. Should I buy packs? Should I open packs? Should I... What pa you, know, you guys have a lot of questions and as a new player, uh, if you go online and you ask this question, should I buy packs or should I buy singles, 99.9% .9 of people are going to tell you to buy singles and make the cheapest, spend the least possible money making a Friday Night Magic deck as possible. Um, drafting aside, drafting as I've talked about in a previous video is kind of the X factor. It is a very, uh, it is a good way to open packs and be productive with them and you know, have a good experience with packs. That being said, uh, one of the concerns I have with all these people telling other people not to buy packs is these people are coming from a very different perspective from a new newer player. These people are saying, I wish I knew when I was a new player not to buy packs, I should have just purchased singles. Now, the question here is, would a new player know what singles to purchase? You might say, oh, they'll just pick a deck list. They will just uh, net deck a list. And you can go ahead and just buy cards the cheapest on TCG Player, or you can buy them from Star City Games. Uh, there are numerous ways to uh, buy a deck online. Now, that I find problematic. And here's the problem. Um, every deck list that I've seen, so if you're net decking a deck, and you're not creating your own deck because you're a new player and you don't know how to create your own deck, you're paying $400 for a standard deck. Easy. 800, assuming there's no Tomogors, uh, 800 for a modern deck, easy, and 1200 for a legacy deck, easy. And here's the concern I have, is when you, no new player is going to want to spend that much money on a hobby they just discovered. Can they spend $4 for a pack? Yes. Are they going to spend $400 to buy a deck list? No. And people will say this. You say, oh no, you just buy piecemeal, buy piecemeal, buy piecemeal. Buy this piece now, buy this piece next time, you know, buy singles and do it piecemeal. Well, I can tell you as a new player, uh, maybe this is un irrational, but this is absolutely true. You don't want to spend your time buying pieces and not playing the game of magic. And when I mean buying pieces, I mean like you could be making your deck by the time you, you have purchase four dollars here, four dollars there, and you have a deck, your deck is probably not no longer the best deck. Especially if you were net decking to begin with. Or probably wasn't a deck that you even enjoyed playing. So here's the difficulty here is when people say buy singles, buy singles, I kind of see this as not the best advice for a brand new player. Um, yes, this is a good advice for a more advanced player because they know what singles they should buy but a new player is not going to know that. Or a new player will have less knowledge about what cards are, can be played in modern and standard, what cards have uh, extended financial impact, uh, like Abrupt Decay. A new player is not going to look at Abrupt Decay and say, oh, that's a good card. They're going to say, oh, no, don't want to play that card. And a new player is not going to look at Festland and say, oh, well, that's, you know, for that extra filtering or whatever it does, yeah, I'll pay 12 bucks for that. No, no new player is ever going to do that. But that being said, what do new players need most? They need uncommons and they need commons. So that is the best way to build a deck for a new player is not to go ahead and buy all of these like cards online, but to just have a large collection of uncommons and commons and some more valuable cards. And the way you can do this extremely easily uh, is they can buy booster packs and open them and in my case I don't want those commons and I don't want those well outside of a few uncommons I collect there's very little cards outside of the most times the rare I don't even take the rare like I'll just give it to somebody and this particular in particular this is something I suggest you doing if you see somebody who is an older player and who has opened a lot of packs who have maybe purchase the case, just ask them for a few uncommons and com and people are very generous because it doesn't cost me anything. Like I'm actually happy to get rid of it because I have too much of that stuff anyway at home and if I don't want to carry like all that and 
when you open like a box, like it gets really messy because then like, like I can't explain it to you, but it's very difficult to keep the cards in the box. Um, especially the way people open my, anyway, anyway, my point is a lot of players who are, who are going to buy a case or a box, those commons and those uncommons are, don't, or mean, they mean less than I'm happy to get rid of them. So a new player can buy a, when I see a new player and they're buying a pack or something, like I'll be like, Hey, so like, do you, are you, do you want to open some packs? Do you want to keep this, some of this stuff like that you're opening for me? And, uh, and they love it. They absolutely love it. When they open a pack and they pull something good. And the interesting part about this is the definition of good for a new player is very different from somebody telling you to buy singles. To them, you know, those five dragons, wow, that's awesome. I got a dragon. And that's true for me. Like when I pulled Dragon Whelp, I was like, oh man, this is awesome. You know, if I pulled like a Mox, I probably would have felt that was actually less awesome than a Dragon Whelp. And what price can you put at that? Like, is there a price you can say, oh, you know, that feeling you get, and that's why I continue to play Magic, and that's why I continue to make videos, because I want to share that experience with uh, newer players and casual players, and even older players, to have that uh, wonderment, I guess, would be the best definition I have for it. So when people say, don't, new players should never buy packs, they should just buy singles, first of all, you're expecting a new player to net deck some type of deck. Or you're expecting a new player to design a deck themselves and with cards they may not know are good or not good. And maybe a card has spiked and then the new player is like, oh cool. So what the problem with net decking is, whenever a net deck does extremely well, those cards spike up in price. But they're not, they are inflated pricing. And a new player is not really going to know that because by definition they're new. And you might say, oh, there's some really smart new players. There's, I mean, there's no better lesson for, for you and Magic than having to experience a rotation and seeing what happens to cards after rotation. Once you, uh, you can hear about it, you can talk about it, but once you feel it, then that's different. And it's the same idea. Um, a lot of people feel like you can learn vicariously. I don't feel like that's true. Um, life lessons like for the startup community are best learned when you fall down and the harder you fall down the more you learn and that's the same with MTG finance it's the same with uh, building decks is you have to go through the, the phases correctly and one of the most enjoyable phases of a new player I imagine is opening packs so I definitely don't want to discourage new players from opening packs um, a lot of people will say buy singles, buy singles. I would say 99% of the internet is going to tell you to buy singles. First of all, how do you know which singles to buy? And secondly, you know, most of the stuff you need is uncommon, common that you could get from, you know, your locals relatively cheaply just opening packs. And lastly, and most importantly, uh, when you're a new player, those cards seem amazing to you. Even if they aren't amazing to somebody else, I would say the majority of the dragons and the angels and the fetch lands, because somebody should tell you fetch lands are good. Uh, they are actually, the pull ratio for a new player of cards that they want to pull, much, much higher than a person who is like me. I just want fetch lands. Like I don't even want Sarkhan, I don't even want Soren, I just want fetch lands. But for a new player, like even a mythic is pretty cool. And it should be that way. We shouldn't like, we shouldn't force new players to feel like this whole game is just about money. Because it's not. It really, truly is not all about money. And money is just a tiny factor of the game, um, which a lot of, or it's a tiny subset of our community has made into a big deal. And at the end of the day, you are buying those cards, you're opening those packs because you want to have fun. You're playing Magic because you want to have fun. You're going there Friday night nights because you want to have fun and you want to socialize. Money only is important when it's limiting the amount of fun you can have due to the card prices. But it's not important, you're not, I, I don't know how many people go to Friday Night Magic and say, hey, I need to make money tonight. I know a few people, but they are a very special breed of people. A very special type of person. Bye guys.